Welsh lobscouse. Right. Lobscouse. It's not even a Welsh word. Originally it comes from um, Norway, I believe. And it was a stew made by uh, Norwegian Vikings and um, later fishermen who would take uh, make a stew of, of all their vegetables and fish. Well, by the time it got to Wales and uh, particularly North Wales, it had uh, transformed into a stew of mutton and vegetables. Uh, mutton was preferred by the Welsh and they had plenty of it. They generally took a small amount of meat and, and here I've only got 700 grams, just shy of 700 grams of meat. Uh, and a lot of, lot of vegetables to make a, a, a really big stew. And that would last for up to around about five days. And they would keep adding vegetables to it as the days went on. And they would make it with the meat bones the um, and the meat... And typically the meat would be cut up fairly small. I, I, I normally, when I make a stew, I like to, to cut it up into large, larger chunks. But for lobscouse, I, I cut it slightly smaller. It makes the meat go further through the stew. In addition to that, you're going to need uh, vegetables. And as long as you've got onion and leeks, it's a Welsh one. And then tap roots. You're gonna. I've got here. I've got for tap root. I've got a swede or rutabaga. I've got a clutch of carrots. They're nice big local carrots, Welsh carrots. I've got a couple of Morris Piper potatoes. You can add more if you need to. I've got two leeks, and that makes it very Welsh because the leek is the emblem of Wales. And for flavour, I've got a stick of celery. I've got also. Uh, what's that about a cup of peas garden peas they're frozen peas and I've got some salt and I've got some pepper now brewing elsewhere is my stock pot and most um, traditional Welsh kitchens would have had a stock pot and uh, into that stock pot would have gone all the bones so I'll show you that now so yesterday when I picked up my lamb and some of the veg I managed to uh, tap the butcher for some extra bones and he gave me this bits of uh, bone from which he'd cut other joints and what I did was I, I put it in some water with half an onion and some salt and I boiled it and simmered it for about two or three hours and I let it cool overnight and I've since skimmed off the fat which collected at the top and I just simply lift that out with a fork and then drop it on a plate. Now I still use that fat because that's good lard for cooking my lobscouse in and the stock um, is nice and rich and thick so we don't want to lose all the goodness from those bones. So I'm going to warm that stock back up because I want it warm when it goes into my lobscouse and uh, we'll get on and get everything prepped and get it cooked. All right, I've cut up my uh, onion. That's one and a half onions, which I've cut up into small dice. I've cut up one of the carrots into small dice, and I've cut up my celery stick into small dice. Now, onions, carrots, and celery are the holy trinity of, of stocks, of uh, stews here in the United Kingdom and in Ireland. And... Um, they make excellent stock vegetables. Uh, I've also got the bone stock from the lamb bone and I've got this beautiful lamb. Now th this is cut from the shank or the shin but traditionally they probably would have used something like scrag end of neck uh, and back then back in the day shank itself was a very cheap cut it's only be become expensive because it's been popularized by modern tv chefs but um, it, traditionally it wasn't a very expensive meat at all so shank is is probably authentic um, scrag end of neck would probably be more authentic and it would have been boiled along with the bones i'm doing this slightly posher i'm going to cook the meat separate from the bone and use a bone stock to get all that bony goodness so then all the next action takes place 
on my stove and I'm going to be cooking in my cast iron pot. Okay, in a break with tradition, I'm going to be browning my meat because I actually prefer it that way. But traditionally, it wouldn't have been done. So I'm going to get some of my fat into the pan and get the meat straight in there. Great smell from that. And as I said, browning the meat is not traditional. It's not traditional in this type of stew. But um, it's fresh in through French cuisine. And uh, I actually like the flavour it gives to the stock, so I'm doing it. And before the meat searing police get on and tell me that I've got to brown it in small batches, Don't bother, please. All the flavour's staying in that pot anyway. I'm not going to go too crazy about um, searing the meat. Just want to get a little bit of surface flavour on that piece of the meat. And then in goes all my onion. All right, I'm just going to stir that for a little bit longer. Okay, into the pot goes my celery and my one carrot because that's going to make up the base of the stew, of the lobscouse. And as you see already, the, the, that's just at this stage, the vegetable to meat ratio is quite high and we've got all those vegetables now to add. So it's a very, very thrifty and delicious dish. Okay, I'm going to start ladling in the stock. And you want to ladle in enough stock to cover the meat. You can use a beef stock cube if you like and make your stock up that way. Or you can use a lamb stock cube if you can get lamb stock. I prefer to make my own if I can. And if I've got time. And for you, my dear viewers, only the best. We'll get that covered now and let that simmer away for a couple of hours. Let it go for two hours. And once that's complete, I'll get back to you. Meanwhile, I'll be chopping up my vegetables. And of course we simmer it with the lid on. So you bring that up to a boil and then turn it down to a low simmer. Alright, so I've done all my veg prep, my peas are still defrosting, I've cut the leeks into these small pieces and I've cut my carrots into, again into small dice. The swede's slightly larger, that breaks up nice but it gives good body to the uh, lobscouse. My potatoes have cut into pieces about this size and I'm soaking those in water with a splash of vinegar just to stop them browning while we're waiting for the stew. I've got some white pepper standing by and some sea salt for flavouring. White pepper was traditionally used in British cooking. In fact, as a, as a young boy, I didn't see black pepper anywhere. Uh, it was really only with the advent of the TV chefs like Graham Kerr and Keith Floyd that we started seeing black pepper used as widely as it is today. So white pepper it is and I use quite a lot because I do like the flavour of pepper and, uh, and traditionally uh, white pepper would have been used in this dish. Right so we're about an hour and a half into cooking time so now I'm going to put my leeks into the lobscouse. Alright, let's have a look. Lift that off. Heavy old lid. And I'll give that a stir. Stir that in. I don't know what it is about cooking in cast iron, but there's something so wonderful about it. I, I don't know, it might be just me, but I think it tastes better. In goes the 
leeks and we'll give those a stir and I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit bring that back up to the boil and once I've done that I'll turn it back down to a, a fairly fast simmer and we want to transfer the, the flavour and sweetness of those leeks into that, into that soup that'll be wonderful so there it is starting to come up to the boil again so I'll turn it back down to I've got a range of six on my stove I'm turning it down to three so it will be a fast simmer and then I'm just going to cover it and give it another half hour and then we'll put all the other veggies in all right it's time to go in with the rest of the veg let's have a look see what it's like it's looking good give it a stir it does smell great then it does smell incredibly meaty in here uh, which is surprising considering we're using so little meat so in go my drained potatoes my tattoos the swede i'm going to crank up the power now and get this back to the boil and then turn it down to a fast simmer again so that's everything in the potatoes the swede or rutabaga and the carrots and there you see a beautiful meaty stew or soup as some of you may call it and I'll bring that up to the boil I think I can put my peas in now we'll bring that up to the boil and then turn it down to a fairly fast simmer and then just let that go for another hour again you can do this by cooking it in a slow cooker overnight it will on a very low setting and just cook it overnight and it will be absolutely gorgeous and unctuous in the morning but we'll speed up the process and we'll cook this for like I said an hour and then we start stirring because it's the stirring that gives it the, the thickness and the character all right that's starting to come up to a boil I'm going to turn that down to a fast simmer and then cover it and let that go all right we're about uh, half an hour into the last hour of cooking and I'm giving it a quick stir everything looks cooked I think this will be a good time to give it a taste test so let's go in and see what it's like oh that's lovely that is rather nice it needs some salt it definitely needs some salt so I'm going to put in some nice salt that lamb tastes amazing I don't know if you you've ever worked with Welsh lamb before but it, it is the most amazing lamb it, it, it is sweet it is tender it is absolutely unctuous and gorgeous flavoured I really do love it we are spoilt for good um, ingredients in, in Wales I'm going to add some pepper I, I like lots so forgive me if I seem to be putting in rather a lot but you put in as much as you like and do your own taste test give it a good stir get all the salt mixed in and as you stir it it starts to break up the potatoes so I'll give that another taste test oh that is lovely oh wow that is so good I can taste the vegetables the meat is stretched beautifully it's, it, it is absolutely wonderful this dish it's a great winter warmer and it's just what a Welsh farmer would have enjoyed after he'd come home from a hard day working in the fields shearing the sheep or tending to his crops right the lid goes back on and we'll finish cooking that off oh 
Okay. Into the last 10 minutes of cooking time. Everything's cooked in there already. I just want to give it a good old stir now and help to break up some of that potato, which will help to thicken it up. And you can see how over, say, five days, I mean, this this will be a couple of meals for my brother and I, a few meals, I would think. Um, but you can see how uh, over five days, by adding more vegetables, maybe a little bit more meat, and just keeping it rolling, that that's going to just keep improving in flavour. Now, some families would have put in herbs. I'm doing mine plain. It's all it's got in it is salt and pepper. But you can put in herbs, and a good one, an excellent herb for um, for lamb or mutton is rosemary, and that grows crazy in North Wales. It's it's kind of everywhere. I think it likes the uh, the sandy soil of the coastal strip. So um, I'm pretty sure rosemary would have been used. My own rosemary bush is bust. It did. The, the wind took it the other day and it's, it's gone, it's destroyed. So I'm going to have to manage without it. But uh, needless to say, it's still going to be a wonderful, wonderful lobscouse. And as you see, I'm stirring it. It's starting to get thicker and thicker as we go. And that is the beauty, that is the joy of lobscouse is you watching it thicken and thicken and the second day taste on this is amazing so we let that go cold and then leave it overnight and then warm it up the next day and that's going to be even better than day one it seems to be the way with soups and stews and curries that is a gorgeous bowl of Welsh goodness right there so I'm going to let that finish cooking the last few minutes. I'll keep it stirring and then we'll serve it up. But before I serve it up, I want to do a quick taste test with you. So there we go, my lobscouse. Let's have a taste of that sauce first. Lovely. Wow. Wow. Beautiful Welsh lamb, the flavour, bit of lamb and bit of carrot. Mm. That lamb is sweet, it just melts in your mouth. Absolutely beautiful. Try a bit of this Swede or rutabaga. Mm. Now the tattoos potato. I've used my Irish Piper potatoes, I really like them, they're nice and floury and they're really good for thickening the sauce. One more. Mm. Mm. I'm rather pleased with that. So there we have it, a beautiful bowl of Welsh lobscouse. Um, served it up with um, two thick buttered chunks of bread, which is really gorgeous. And I'm just going to give it a little final dusting of dried parsley. And then that's ready to serve.
Hey friends, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you would like to follow my channel, please subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications for all my future videos. It would be great to hear from you in the comments and I'll try to get back to as many of you as possible. You may wish to check out these titles or even help me out with a donation using the links in the description below the video. Thanks for watching.